Making a life worth living and a retirement worth having is really about the people in our lives, is it not? The people that are supposed to care for us in our old age, the people that are supposed to wonder about how we're doing in our careers, the people who are supposed to determine whether or not we make it in life is not the same thing, is it? When I talk in a soft tone, people may or may not listen. When I tell the story of my life, people won't care. Because people don't really care about others, right? I mean, isn't that literally what we talk about all the time with other people, is that so-and-so doesn't care how I feel about this, and so-and-so doesn't mind how this is impacting me, and -and so-and-so doesn't care whether or not this person is freezing in the cold, and -and so-and-so doesn't care whether or not this person practically has food or anything else. And then there are people who like to play a game who like to play the game of, look, I'm helping someone, and I'll take it and put it on video of this man who's asleep so soundly on a bench that we're going to mess around with him first, then we're going to give him money so that we feel better about messing with his property and stealing his federally protected documents. And then we're going to monkey with his food every time he tries to go get food. And we're going to make this a life game of, let's teach him not to trust anyone. Or is that too much of a game for people to listen to? You see, if I talk gentle and kind, someone might listen. If I talk rough, like a man who's raging over the little violations and federal law uh, despicabilities that he's experiencing from law enforcement and others, he then gets hit further by law enforcement showing up on his path. Like they've put a tag in him, much like you'd tag a dog in case they got lost. Now, when I have no technology going, when I have no cell phone on me, when I have the battery out of my computer, how is it literally that I'm being found? Is there something in our driver's licenses that allows them to track us? Are chips that small today? And openly, this person of interest television show literally shows us how they use cameras on the street to possibly watch every little thing we do. And let's face it, there are also cameras in libraries. Now, why is that? Is that to watch people to see if they're going to steal books? Or is that to literally watch and voyeur on people's lives of what do they do in library? I had a librarian ask me what software was I going to use. And in reality, I just needed a small room. Practically, when I talk like this, I'm easier to listen to. When I call my mother, I'm absolutely raging, and she plays this woe is me attitude of, we need to know where you are. No, they don't. If they practically cared about my life, they would have not destroyed my life with their lies, with their manipulations of my federally protected documentation, with the theft of my property, and no matter what I tell her, according to her, what I'm saying is a lie. That there's no way in hell that someone could be getting into my storage unit that I'm paying for, that the family's paying for now, because someone has monkeyed with my legal name. Someone else has tried to turn me into something that I'm not. Someone else has tried to turn me back into something that I've never been. And other people just don't get what that's like because they've never had identity theft. They practically never had every cent of their life stolen from them. They practically never had all of their business documentation literally destroyed with someone thinking they could just monkey around and mock and stalk their life. You see, I put things in my bag and then I go to sleep at night. I have to sleep at some point during the day. Either I fall asleep at a restaurant where I've just eaten because I'm literally exhausted from the night of freezing to death, or I practically fall asleep out in the open air like a camper. But there's always some young person, some monstrous man, who thinks they're going to open my bag, take things from my storage unit, and throw it into the bag that I'm carrying. Or a sibling who thinks this is fun and games. You see, practically, when inheritance is at stake at the late stages of someone's life, there's always a liar in the midst. There's always a family member who feels slighted. There's always someone who's bean counting what a mother might try to do to make sure that a son has a quality pair of shoes to wear on his feet in winter. Or literally might want to give some money to help him pay a few bills because right now he's struggling to find work. But openly these employment groups that are a part of churches don't fully address the soul aspect of losing work. There are many people who are now renting their homes out is very possible because they can't afford to keep them anymore. So they pray and hope that someone in Airbnb is going to rent their house for a reasonable price that will help them offset the costs of living there. They didn't downsize when they should. They didn't pay attention to the writing on the wall when they might have. And openly, there's a lot of people who are producers in this world. But how do they produce? Do they produce by soliciting men and 
getting intimate in their relations with them and talking with them about everything inappropriately in a friendly manner and then throw them away because they didn't measure up financially. I've had that happen to me in life, and yet I still love that individual a great deal. I've had other women literally parade me through their homes in next to virtually nothing while their husbands are away when they were rebuilding their mansions in the countryside of 60-some acres and literally then say that I was stalking them. And I'm like, I didn't parade me through the closets in the dark in a sundress looking for something that you are not going to get from me because you're a married woman and I don't go there. But openly when I talk like a real man interacting with real women who see my soul and love my heart and understand my mind and care for my aspect of life, other people, other men, other women think that I have no lawful right to have those liaisons, to have those life experiences, to be able to say no to inappropriate behaviors of immoral women and immoral men. You see, it's morality that's being touted in a lot of places. Morality is what's being touted in churches, but what is the moralistic aspect of allowing homeless people, people who are impoverished, to go without I literally just got off the phone raging at a man who owns a karate school who told me that he might have some people willing to purchase a jacket, but when I wasn't willing to tell him who owned the jacket because the donor wanted to be remain anonymous to the point of the sale of the jacket, he literally was no longer interested in purchasing the jacket. But what's more, he would not open his heart, mind, or soul enough to say, you know, we have 30 families here. There might be a family here that has a child who would love that coat, who'd be honored to help a homeless family to eat in life. Instead, his entire perspective was, if the jacket was owned by a famous person, then they'd be a lot more honored to own it. Totally missing the entire point of the call and the text message to the various martial arts groups in the community, saying, look, we have a beautiful old Adidas karate jacket that has been cherished by one man since teenage years. He openly has had it his entire life. And even saying that online puts that jacket at risk for being slashed like other clothing he's had that he loved in his storage unit that were cut by someone who goes in and cuts his clothes. You see, when people do these vile acts against people, they think they're having a gay old time. They think literally they have the right to do it, to damage a person's life goods. But openly, the man on the telephone, the man representing that karate school, didn't realize that what the request was was to help a homeless family. It was not a request to make him into a famous jacket-owning person. The request was, there's a homeless family that needs to literally eat and find shelter. And someone has donated this jacket lovingly to try and get money for it so that that family might go on a little further in life. Now, when I talk like this, does this make more sense from the marketing perspective? That that man totally failed to market his entire program in one full swell on top of the fact that he thought he'd throw insult to injury when I called back and said, look, this is ridiculous. You're missing the point of this call. Simply trying to say this is outrageous. But my guess is he's doing more immoral things in that place than we should know about. Isn't that what we feel when someone doesn't literally do what we're looking for? You see, the reality is when people are listening, they're listening only from their perspective. They're not always listening from the perspective of, what is the point of this call? Why is this person calling me about this topic? What is the need that needs to be solved here? You see, the need that needed to literally be solved was that a family needed to have some money and some other people cared enough to donate some items to a cause of helping to feed a family. Isn't that what causes are about? Whether they're for-profit or non-for-profit or just quick cash sales, isn't that the whole point of life? That under Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we all need food, we all need shelter, we all need warmth, and we all need love of some kind. And sometimes that love comes from strangers who literally just drive us from one spot to the next because the blisters on our feet are so painful we can barely walk. And then there's the other types of people in those same organizations who literally will cut a man's wheels on his travel bags to make fun of his homelessness. Or like in my case, will get into his zipped bags while he falls asleep and steals his federally protected life insurance policies that he's trying to be given a copy of to to the woman who gets the money as soon as possible. But the illegals here don't think about that. 
they just think about what can I steal, what can I call, what can I try and get out of, but they don't realize how much I've talked to these companies. That if they try to portray themselves as me, they will get found out, caught, and probably put in federal prison. You see, stealing of documentation is a federal crime. But people have gotten so far away from what the laws of the land are that they literally think that even the law is honest and true. They're not. Our people are being voyeured about in almost every setting. We go grocery shopping, there's cameras all over the place. Are they really catching crime? I don't know. I was in Walmart one time and watched a guy literally pick up a bottle and stuff it in his jacket and walk off. And I tried to go tell some employee and they're like, oh, well, that happens here. And I was flabbergasted. Now, what am I supposed to do then? You see, we can't decide what we're going to police in life is not true. That we literally don't have the right to call police is sometimes the truth. Because if we try and call to get help on something, it could end up ruining our entire life. Or if we don't handle a relationship well enough, if we allow the situation to go to the point where we feel like we should call police because of our own failures to silly, literally sit down over a cup of tea and talk things over, that call to police can ruin a person's life. You see, you never know what a person is fully dealing with because you're not in their life day to day. Or you're so selfishly in their life that it's always only about you and never about the other person. When in your lifetime have you given up something completely for the Lord's love of someone else? Let's think about that a minute. The Lord in heaven is what most Christians say they believe in, the faith that they profess, that I am a Christian by how I conduct my life. So a person stands in front of you who has no food. Do you openly say, hey, I noticed you look a little hungry. Would it be all right if I bought you a meal? Would that would you allow me that permission to help you in that way? That is the most honorable way someone can offer help. A second way is another kindness, which is to give them literally a gift card for an establishment. That produces truly that on that gift card there's actually money, which is really important. There are some people who are vicious and will give a one that's fake, and the person goes to utilize it, they eat the meal, and then they discover there's no money on the card. And that is a vile act against the house of the Lord. But in truth, that's a second way because it allows the person to have the honor of choice. It allows them to feel more whole when they're struggling in poverty. Now, the third and fourth ways that people try to do things is that they literally try to go somewhere, purchase a meal on someone's behalf as if they have been given some divine guidance of what that little person will actually eat unless they ask the person, has this person ever come in here to eat? Do you know what they like? But they're taking away a person's right to say no when they make that purchasing decision. It might have been better to just hand the person the 7 or $8 and say, you look like you might be hungry. It's my honor to give you the gift of $8 so that you can go and get a meal. In today's world, lunch is about that cost. But practically, they took the control to their own selfishness of needing to be in control of purchasing a beverage, of purchasing food, and yet they're expecting a total stranger to buy into the fact that that food has not been tainted in some way by a retail employee who's maleficent, or by the person itself who's trying to put on the food off on them. There are a lot of predators that do that. They see people walking down the road. They walk up. They assume they're homeless based on how they're dressed or what they presume to be true or may not be true. And they try to present people with food. And in that food is a tainting, which causes a person to fall over, fall asleep, and then that person can be absconded with. You see, in life, we're not teaching self-protection anymore. We're not teaching self-preservation, little, little techniques anymore either. I used to teach a women's self-defense class when I was in my, I guess, uh, maybe mid-20s before I literally moved to Japan. And it helped me to pay bills and do some things, and I enjoyed helping women to feel safer in this world. But today's society has changed a great deal. We have technologies that can infiltrate the mind. We have audio pitches that we can't hear that can destroy our ability to think. And we openly can get overstressed by being hazed and harassed and, in our minds, stalked when we may not really be being stalked we may just be in the stages of someone trying to woo our love. And that's the sadness, is that women today are no longer wooed by men. They are manipulated, they are manhandled, they are seduced, they are stalked in some way to the point that the woman catches them. 
But openly, I'm talking about real life. I'm talking about real things. I'm talking about real practicality of making a life worth living. Because making a life worth living is about having people in our lives who say, you know, even though it's an inconvenience to me right now, I see that you're in struggle, and I'm going to make one simple request of you, that if you literally need my help, you'll just tell me which help you need, and I will do my best to produce that one piece of help. You see, helping someone is never about the help that you wish to deliver. Helping someone practically move forward in an impossible situation is literally saying to that individual, what do you need most right now from me in order to move a little bit closer to your personal and professional goals of getting back on your feet, literally out of these situations and into a literal career opportunity? Bridge jobs are never enough money is absolute truth. We have elderly men and women, couples, who are struggling. They are literally sharing food. They are not telling people about their struggles because churches are no longer a place for people to, dis to display their woes. But it's not that. There are some small churches that are getting on the bandwagon, probably because I've crapped all over them in a phone call, or I've chided them, or I've given them a copy of my book that literally says, make this a part of your sermon. But openly, what I've said to people is, look, you have moments of time to help people. And if someone's without food and you've got a can of food that's extra, why wouldn't you lend the can of food that's extra? But some of these little can sharing places are ridiculous because they're putting in foods that can be infiltrated by bugs, by mites, by other things. You don't put noodles in one of those boxes. They're also left in the hot sun during the summer months, which literally means that the food can go bad because metal, as you know, heats. So that could destroy any milk-based product like a cream of something, which seems to be a constant. You see, if we're going to produce these community book-sharing facilities, and if we're going to produce these community food-share, give-and-take boxes that don't have a lock, that allow people to come and take things or put things back as life goes, we have to think about the elements. We have to think about nature. We have to think about the animals and varmints that know how to open those things. And we openly have to think about sanitation and safety of food. You see, we've got a lot of employees in retail food establishment that don't care one aspect about your life and your sanitation and your healthy rights to real food. We also have a lot of infidels that are starting to infiltrate our food systems. And then we literally wonder, why are there cars empties in parking lots so long? And why aren't the police looking into these cars that sit empty forever in lots? Or why aren't these security agents more worried about those cars than the people who are literally sitting there taking a nap from a long day's work? Now, practically, if I talk about real life and real things, people don't want to know the real world because they are safe in their own little world bubble. But what if one moment of time changed it all for you? What if one impossible phone conversation, one impossible meeting over tea, changed your entire universe to be productive, positive, and prosperous. Just one call. You see, the Lord moves people into our lives and out of our lives when we don't show them regard. The Lord may move those souls to try and reach back out to us a little later to say, hey, still here, looking to talk, looking to have a conversation, looking for a lunch. Maybe you could make me food, or maybe I could make you food in your house. You provide the food, I'll do the cooking. That's not the point. The point is that breaking bread together is something that we are so far removed from. Fast food establishments get the drive throughs and we drive through and literally eat and drive and talk on the phone and do multitasking things without literally sitting down and saying a prayer over our meals anymore. I've started to pray over my meals because of the number of my meals that have been tainted or for the fact that I do fall asleep. I don't think it's narcolepsy. I think it's exhaustion. But openly, a man like me is not allowed to be exhausted with hazing, harassment, and the attack on my personhood, my paperwork, or my property. And I literally have a 86-year-old mother who is so engulfed in a lie that she wants to insist that she doesn't have the opportunity to get into my storage unit and that she literally cannot possibly believe that someone is getting in and out of there, but they literally are. My siblings look the most guilty. Other officials look the second guilty, and third, the storage people themselves. Because I'm a very highly organized individual is not the point that I've been putting things together for the purpose of different donations or different sales, and when I go to find things and things are missing, I know there's a problem. 
But proof is really the hard part, isn't it? When there's videos only on the outside of the property, not on the interior of the property, how do we prove that someone's getting in and out of our stuff? We're paying for security under federal law, yet we're not receiving it. We're paying for community servants, but we're not receiving those either. We're paying for the right to our own medical care, but we have monking judges and other people trying to ruin our rights to decide what we literally do with our bodies. We've got a lot of problems in America, is absolute truth. But the absolute number one problem amongst Americans right now is the lack of conversation between people who once loved each other in some way, shape, or form and cannot get beyond their own selfish desires for the other person's life or their own life that they won't make a difference in a person's life in a moment of time that really matters. You see, the house of the Lord is what people do in this land. The house of the Lord is what the angelic realm tries and struggles to get people to do on behalf of the Lord. You see, there's one fatal flaw in religion. That it doesn't teach the fact that the Lord moves people to do things, but it's the people's movement of their actions that literally produce godly results for other people. When there's a travesty across the land, when there's a hurricane, when there's a tornado, people flock in masses to go help people who lose their stuff. But when an individual is being stolen from from their own personal apartment unit or their own home through a locked door, people are quick to say that's not possible. They don't rally around to support, and they literally won't give up one second of time to help that person try to protect their rights, their property, their paperwork, their personhood at all. So the monsters of the world can win. And they win literally because they don't listen. People are so not listening today that when someone tells them the absolute truth, they still don't listen and they still don't hear it. I absolutely know that my property is being stolen. I know because I know precisely what I purchased in my life. I know precisely where I purchased it and I know precisely how many of them I had. But someone wants to tell me that that's not true. And why is it that they would have the ability to say that? Either one, they're the ones stealing and ruining things. Or two, they're just so arrogant to think that they know what my property is. Now when I say it like that, how does that make you feel? It doesn't make you feel good. It doesn't make you feel well. It makes you feel like something's going on for this guy. I don't want to get involved. And that's precisely the problem today. That poverty downtown and uptown is the result of people not being willing to hear how quickly their own lives can go into poverty. People I know have made a good residual income per month have gotten bored in that income. They've gotten bored with the shtick that they've been selling. They've gotten bored with the relationships. They've gotten bored with the trying to motivate people to do things that they're not willing to do themselves is not true. But openly, love is missing in the relationships. Constant honor and regard is missing in those relationships. But people are used to making employment a certain way, so that individual went off and got a job, multiple jobs at this point, while others around her and him struggle. Practically, she can help people get jobs, but when people ask her for the job help, she's like, this is all I'm recruiting for. You see, the difference in the world is when we have someone who needs a job is to literally send out a light source of some kind that literally says, I know a person who has these skill sets that desperately needs a job. Does anyone in my overall network know of a job opportunity that would help this person get somewhere in life? And that's what we have to do now. The old antiquated ways of producing employment is not working for people. We've got tons of employment agencies, but they don't really have any jobs. Most of the jobs are in retail, and maybe we have too many retail establishments. not true that we don't have enough children who believe that they should literally start their careers in retail. Every teenage child should be required to work in retail at a good quality company that practically trains them really well in customer service. The truth is that sometimes they need people in the job so quickly that they don't have time to do the proper training or the divisional manager is too lazy to do it appropriately because they think, surely this person knows how this works. That is not the case and that's why we have problems in the land and that's why we have lawsuits and that's why we have all sorts of other issues going on for people. 
Now, in life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. I am practically a radio man. I started radio in high school. I was a radio DJ in my high school. That was a long time ago, and I did okay. I hadn't quite sold myself on who I was in those moments of time, but that's okay. But even that license has gone missing. Right now, I'd like to be an audiocaster or a podcaster. An audiocaster literally makes up stories and tells people, like in Lake Wobegon days, and tells stories. Openly, I'd like to talk about the magic of the Lord, but I haven't found a relationship yet in my business network that would allow me to work at a Christian network or a metaphysical network or a spiritual network that would allow me to talk about what I know about the God in heaven from my own life experiences and that of research. Practically, I can be a podcaster because I have interviewed some famous people who are graciousness, gracious enough to either allow me to have a, a directly sold interview, meaning they established all the questions and answers, or literally someone who gave me the opportunity to do impromptu, or literally someone who I actually helped to produce a better interview quality for themselves, which I hope at some point helped them with what they're trying to accomplish. But in my lifetime, I'm looking for an opportunity online where I can work from my home, wherever that might end up being, and produce a life worth living and a retirement worth having, just like you. Have you ever been in a position of transition? Have you ever hunted for a job? Have you gone through a series of job hunts? Maybe literally it's because you're not using the right skill sets, but also possibly because the people in your relationship network don't really give a rat's ass whether or not you're employed or not. And that is the travesty of the world because the more people age, the more people tap out, the more people we get in poverty, the more crime, the more difficulty, the more rape, the more raging, the more anti-America sentiments we start to build. Now, practically, America is land of the free, home of the brave, proudly so, loving mom, apple pie, and lemonade. But the reality is the people here have the right to be employed, have the right to worship, have the right to find groups that will not crap all over them for the issues they're going through, that will not make fun of them, that will not dishonor the organization by playing pranks on them, and that's something we have to really look at. I've been to several small churches that played pranks on me when I was there, literally ruining property. You have to wonder what kind of monsters those people are. They're so terrified of someone new or someone who looks different that they think they'll just violate rights. You see, we live in a land that loves on people not enough. We live in a land that destroys relationships easily enough. We've got many people who we love in our life that will say, talk to the hand or get the hell away from me. But the question is, was the reason for that request justified? Or was it just an emotional tirade of not being able to tolerate how someone felt in those moments of time? You see, any relationship can be repaired if both parties are willing to address the real issue at hand. That love is the most important aspect of a person's life. That peace, honor, and dignity is the second part of being holy in front of the God in heaven. And that honoring people's skills, talents, time, and treasure is really what we need to be doing most. The fortune of my life is still in the side wings for me. I long to tell her how much of a fortune she is. I carry the rock to prove it. I've got the life insurance policy that says it. And openly, someone stole that policy from me in the last week. I had a copy in my bag and it's gone. Someone literally thought they had the right to open my bags, get into a pouch where I carry it, and steal that policy from me. And I want that person put in federal prison for the violation of all of my rights. Now, how do you sell that to an America that doesn't care about what happens to someone else because they've not thought how easily it could be to happen to themselves? We must produce a new version of movies that talk about how the love of God, how the proudness of our country is related to the integrity, honesty, and best practice policies of a billion-dollar organization like America. People need employment. People need practical food. They need people who will not taint food, and we need to show our workers more honor, dignity, and regard for the handling of our food because one mischievous person can destroy an entire family in illness, crime, and other things. Let's take back America, folks. Let's take back talk. Let's take back 
the opportunities to repair relations that are meant to be healthy, whole, and prosperous under the house of the Lord. This has been Blake Henson of Blaze Communications talking about magic and mayhem of life. The magic is always what the Lord produces between people and in opportunities and food wherewithal, if you will. The mayhem is what people do to lie to themselves about their rights over others, to destroy relationships, to disregard opportunities that the Lord presents, to fix it all and make things whole. Let there be peace on earth is something that Ruth Artman wrote in a song. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me is something that most people must start to put within their soul. I'm proud to be an American is a Lee Greenwood song which we think should be played every morning in every school. But we also think that the infidels should be left at the store. That if they're here to take our technologies, to delete our files, to mess around on our computers, that they need to go back home. They do it because of their arrogance to believe that they can, but they do it because someone either pays them to or because they're just bored literally with how stupid we all appear. And that's a sadness in this world, that America has become the laughing stock of the world instead of the proud leader of the world in every area of life there is. Now this has been Blake Enson of Blaze Communications LLC talking about real life, real things, and wanting to produce magic and mayhem in a new, incredible way. But I'm looking for an employer who's willing to pay me a modest wage to do that. If you've got podcasters in your network, if you've got radio stations on your horizons, if you've got opportunities in your corporations for someone to tell stories about how your customers benefit from your products or services, I'm literally your guy looking for money to live my life and to get out of the streets at night where it's cold, windy, and freezing. Thanks for listening.